A very good evening and uh, thank you for joining us <clears throat> for this Bible study. We have been studying about the falls of Satan. We are talking about how Satan is cast out from his position of authority. Each time he is cast out, he is cast out to a lower position than uh, what he held before. The first fall, as we have seen, uh, was when he was cast out of the third heaven to the second heaven, right? He was in the mount of God. He was the anointed cherub that covered uh, probably the glory of God. Uh, he was the head of God's creation, right? He was the head of God's creation and <clears throat> he was uh, ruling God's creation at that time as we have seen uh, in the previous Bible study he lost his authority there and he was kicked out to the second heaven and there you know he was uh, he he continued ruling the kingdom that God had created he continued uh, to do so in rebellion against God but not only did he rule the kingdom that was in his power but he also attempted to take over God's throne as we read about it in Isaiah chapter 14 and that's when he lost authority in the second heaven and we see in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2 that God destroyed all of creation with a great flood of water and then in Genesis 1 and verses 3 onwards we see God recreating what he had destroyed right and he divided the waters from the waters and made a firmament again and <coughs> put the sun, moon and stars and the other planets back in their place in the second heaven. But you see, Lucifer, uh, uh, Satan lost his authority in the second heaven. And from being an anointed cherub that covereth, we see him as Leviathan, the dragon, the seven-headed dragon in the great deep, which is under the third heaven. Now, there is enough evidence in the Bible for this. And you must also see, uh, notice that the Bible says, that there is a great mass of water right under the third heaven and the face of the deep, the Bible says, is frozen. So it's like glass, it's ice, right? It's like glass and the Bible clearly talks about that. The face of the deep is frozen. And under that is this great mass of waters in which is Leviathan. And of course, he lost his authority in the second heaven and was cast down to the first heaven and that's where he became the prince of the power of the air he is also called the god of this world which would be the world system that we spoke about and <coughs> he operates along with his angels who rebelled against god along with him as well as uh, with the assistance of evil spirits or unclean spirits which we spoke about in another bible study so right now he is the god of this world and he is the prince of the power of the air and his dominion is in the first heaven those are the first two falls of satan he fell from the third heaven to the second heaven was cast out from the second heaven to the first heaven and that's where he is today that's his dominion uh, we are going to look at the third fall of Lucifer or Satan as it's recorded in the scriptures. Look at uh, Luke chapter 10. The gospel of Luke chapter 10 and we'll read verse 18. Luke chapter 10 and verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Again, a lot of Bible teachers think that this is a reference to something that happened in the past. You know, when he was cast out of the third heaven to the second heaven. Uh, that's what they think. But Luke chapter 10 and verse 18 is not talking about the past. It's talking about the future. Right? Jesus saw in a vision or prophetically what's going to happen in the future. And he says, I saw Satan as lightning. As lightning fall from heaven and this is the third fall in which he falls from the first heaven to the earth i'm going to explain that a little bit more in a second but let's make this timeline this is the earth right and this is 
the timeline that we usually follow. This is the crucifixion. And of course, we also believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then very soon is going to be the rapture of the church, after which will be uh, the tribulation. The tribulation. And then the second advent of Jesus Christ. The second advent. This is the rapture. We believe in a pre-tribulation rapture of born-again Christians and then the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. So this is the church age that we are living in. And before the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is the Old Testament. Is the Old Testament. <coughs> this fall of Satan is again as I've said from the first heaven to the earth and this takes place in the middle of the tribulation in the middle of the tribulation as we're going to see uh, now now the reason why Satan loses his authority in the first heaven well he's been there for a long time as the prince of the power of the air as the God of this world he's been there for a very long time uh, but Jesus says he saw Satan as lightning, right, fall from heaven. And that's a reference to the first heaven where he is. He is the prince of the power of the air. Now, in some books that I've read by <clears throat> some Christian Bible teachers, uh, especially those who write prophecy, write about prophecy in the Bible, I've seen them say or, or I've uh, read, you know, their books and they say that when the pope was elected right the you know the current pope there was lightning hitting uh, the vatican you know the main building of the vatican i forget the name of it uh, whatever that was you know where the conclave was taking place where they elected the current pope so i think most christians saw that picture of lightning hitting that building so these bible teachers said look Luke chapter 10 verse 18 has been fulfilled and uh, Satan as lightning has fallen from heaven to the earth and he's gone into the Vatican. Well, I don't think that is Luke chapter 10 verse 18. Now, is the devil there in the Vatican? I absolutely believe that. I believe that. He's been there since the beginning. Right? And uh, they are devil worshippers, basically those people in the Vatican. I'm not talking about the common Roman Catholic people, the church members. I'm talking about the hierarchy and the system, right? It's a devilish system. I don't doubt for a second that the devil is there in the Vatican. But that's not Luke chapter 10 and verse 18, because that's yet future. That's going to take place in the future. Now, like I've said, the reason for this fall of Lucifer from or Satan from the first heaven to the uh, to the earth is because of another attempt that he makes to fight against the third heaven. Remember, we have seen last time that the devil has access to the third heaven, right? So whatever they have taught you, uh, you know, in your Sunday school is wrong. If they have taught you that the devil can never stand in the presence of God because God is holy and the devil is sinful, right? And wicked. And evil that's not the truth the devil has access to the throne room of God and in Job chapter 1 Job chapter 2 Zechariah chapter 3 we see the devil going and standing before God in his presence so what he does is he makes another attempt like he did when he was in the second heaven right Isaiah 14 he makes another attempt like that against God and that's why he loses his authority in the first heaven. Let's uh, go back and read Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14, I believe, is not just something that is talking about what happened in the past, but it's also got a future application. Look at Isaiah chapter 14, uh, verses 13 and 14. Verses 13 and 14. <clears throat> For thou hast said, let's begin at verse 12. 
How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? You see that? Cut down to the ground. I told you in the previous Bible study that the second part of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12 will be yet fulfilled in the future. He is cut down to the ground. From the first heaven he is cast down to the earth. How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? Look at verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart. <clears throat> Again, this is not just the past but this is the future. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. These famous or infamous five evils. I think it's like God turned it around on the devil. He said, you have these five evils. I'm going to kick you down five times. Right? These are the five falls of Lucifer. <coughs> so, again, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Isaiah 14 verses 12 to 14 talk about this third fall of Lucifer. I'm sorry, I, I don't know why I keep saying Lucifer. The third fall of the devil. The third fall of the devil. Look at uh, Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Verses 7 through 9. Revelation chapter 12 verses, 12, verses 7 through 9. And there was war in heaven. You see that? There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was place found any more in heaven. So now, not only does he lose his authority in the first heaven, but he loses his access to the third heaven. He absolutely loses all authority in the heavenly places. Uh, neither was, uh, was there place found anymore in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Do you see that? This is a reference to the devil being cast out in the middle of the tribulation. Revelation chapter 12 is in the middle of the tribulation. Remember the first three and a half years we call the beginning of sorrows. It could be more than three and a half years, but at least three and a half years. And then the second three and a half years, which are known as uh, the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation. That's when the devil incarnates himself as a man in the person of the Antichrist. Just like we have the mystery of godliness, which is God manifest in the flesh. We have the mystery of iniquity, which is the devil manifesting himself in the flesh <clears throat> and that happens in the middle of the tribulation again please keep this in mind that uh, revelation 12 7 to 9 i think a lot of you really need me to write down these verses so i'll go ahead and do that uh, but look at this the devil is the prince of the power of the air today and he loses his authority in the first heaven he's cast down to the ground right according to isaiah 14 verse 12 as well as revelation 12 verse 9 he is literally coming down to the earth and that happens in the tribulation in the future now we don't have the time to prove uh, from the scriptures that revelation 12 indeed is the midpoint of the tribulation but it is if you study <clears throat> uh, the book of Revelation you will see that right in Revelation 12 you have a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the sun and all that that's a reference to Israel and the, uh, there was another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns right that's the old Leviathan the great red dragon and uh, seven crowns upon his heads and what did he do he stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. 
right? And uh, she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Again, we don't have the time to, uh, uh, you know, look at who this man child is, who it is a reference to, right? A lot of people say it is the Lord Jesus Christ. It, it could be, but it could be somebody else as well. But God delivered this man child out of the hands of the dragon. Look at verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness. This, this is Revelation chapter 12. Right? She fled into the wilderness. As we have said in many of our Bible studies, the Bible teaches us that what happened in the past with Israel, right? In the Old Testament times, when Israel came out of Egypt, they were wandering in the wilderness. God fed them with manna from heaven and water from the rock. That's going to happen once again in the last three and a half years of the tribulation. Remember Jesus said, when you see the abomination of desolation, stand in the holy place, right? That which was spoken of by Daniel. Let him who is in Judea flee. Let him not return to take his clothes. If he's in the field, if he's on the housetop, do not let him go into the house to take his things. Just leave and run away. Because there shall be great tribulation then. Like there, was, like there never ever was before in the history of this world. Jesus says this in Matthew 24. And that is the midpoint of the tribulation. Why is there so much of tribulation? Why is it called great tribulation? Because the devil comes down to the earth and begins to persecute Israel. And that's what we read about in Revelation chapter 12. Now verse 7. And there was war in heaven. So as soon as God... Uh, delivers the man child out of the hands of the dragon and rescues the woman who is again Israel she is led to the wilderness where she's uh, kept safe by God the devil from the first heaven launches his attack against God and his angels so Michael representing God along with the other angels of God fight against the devil and his angels the devil and his angels lose their authority in first heaven <clears throat> and now cast down to the earth. This is what happens. Again, as I've said, this is in the middle of the tribulation. This also coincides with the, the resurrection of the Antichrist. Right? If uh, you're new to our Bible studies or you've, you know, if you've never uh, heard Bible-believing preachers and teachers, you may be thinking what I'm talking about. But yes, the, the Antichrist is going to die in the tribulation and he's going to rise up from the dead. All right, and he's going to be worshipped as God. He is the great imitator, the great counterfeit. So he imitates what God does. God's son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for our sins, was buried and rose up again on the third day according to the scriptures. The devil imitates that. And the devil's son, the Antichrist, <clears throat> who is the devil manifest in the flesh, dies, but not like the Lord Jesus Christ, who was the sinless holy son of God. <clears throat> he's that wicked one, the evil one, and he's killed, his head is wounded, and he dies, and he rises up again. He rises up again, and when he rises up, he rises up as Satan incarnate as Satan incarnate. Uh, look at a few verses. Look at Revelation chapter 13. <coughs> Revelation chapter 13. And verse 3. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 3. This is talking about the Antichrist. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And Oh, sorry, all the world wondered after the beast. So his heads was, one of his heads was wounded to death. He dies and his deadly wound was healed. He comes back to life and all the world wondered after him. After the beast, right? Now look at uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. This was Revelation 13 verse 3. Now look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4. 
Second Thessalonians chapter 2 we'll read verses 3 and 4 verses 3 and 4 let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God so this is the abomination of desolation <clears throat> when the Antichrist rises back to life as Satan incarnate he sits in God's temple and he demands worship all right so this happens only after the devil is cast down to the earth the first part of the tribulation the Antichrist uh, is like the man of sin you know a uh, a lesser evil version you can say of the son of perdition all right <clears throat> he comes peaceably with flatteries he uh, comes bringing peace to Israel so he doesn't really do much against Israel in the first half of the tribulation but in the second half he you know something changes and that is the devil has come down to the earth that's what changes and he incarnates himself in uh, the Antichrist. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13 and we'll read <coughs> sorry, verse 8. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So he is worshipped by the unsaved people of this world. So this casting down of the devil from the first heaven to the earth coincides with the resurrection of the Antichrist, the abomination of desolation, <coughs> the persecution of Israel and all these things. As we have seen, he persecutes Israel when the Antichrist uh, rises from the dead and the devil incarnates himself in him he begins to persecute Israel in other words he breaks his seven-year pact or covenant with Israel look at Revelation chapter 12 verse 13 Revelation chapter 12 and verse 13 and when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child Revelation 12 and uh, verse 13. Look at all the 13s, the number 13s. If you go back and look at the previous Bible study on the subject and today's, you would notice all the number 13s that are connected to the devil and the Antichrist. The number 13 in the Bible is the number of rebellion. The number of rebellion, like Nimrod. Right, he's the 13th from Adam. Judas Iscariot is, connect, uh, you know, a, uh, is connected to the number 13. And then you have uh, you know, the Sodomites in the Old Testament uh, connected to the number 13. It's rebellion against God. So the devil, when he sees that he was cast unto the earth, he was defeated in this war with Michael and his angels right the archangel Michael and the other angels who fought against the devil and the angels kicked him out of the first heaven to the earth and his revenge was to go after Israel and that's what he does for three and a half years and the whole Bible agrees with this right it's so clear here in verse 13 he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child look at verse 17 verse 17 and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ so this is very clear that the dragon or the devil uh, is cast down to the earth That is from the first heaven and then he persecutes Israel 
for three and a half years in the tribulation. Look at uh, Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And we'll read verses 15 and 16. Matthew chapter 24 verses 15 and 16. Now verse 15 is again the midpoint of the tribulation. <clears throat> when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. That's because the devil has come down to the earth. Look at uh, the same chapter in verse 21. Verse 21. <coughs> For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. This is the time of the persecution of Israel. Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verses 15 and 16 and verse 21. All of these verses talk about the persecution of Israel by the Antichrist. But again, in Revelation chapter 12, we see that is the great red dragon who persecutes Israel. So what do we understand? The great red dragon is in the Antichrist. That's how through the Antichrist he persecutes Israel. Israel for three and a half years. Not only that, but the Bible tells us that when he is cast down to the earth, uh, he not only persecutes Israel, but he also rules the world. Now this is important for us. He rules the earth. He rules the earth for three and a half years. Remember what I've said in the previous Bible study. Each time, it's about a kingdom, you see. It's about a kingdom. The main theme of the Bible is the kingdom. In the third heaven, it was about the kingdom, the final authority. Who is going to sit on the throne? God said, the kingdom is for his son, Jesus Christ. The devil was like Adam to whom power or authority or dominion was relegated by God. Right? He was... He was this, this authority was delegated authority. It was not his own. It was given to him, to Adam. In the same way it was given to Lucifer. But he thought he's better than God. There was pride in him because of his beauty and his wisdom as we have seen in the previous Bible study. There was pride because of his wisdom and his beauty because of the authority God gave him. He thought, I don't need God anymore. I can do this. I can rule this creation which God has made. Right? It's about a kingdom. Same thing in the second heaven. It's about a kingdom. What did he say? I will set my throne above the stars of God. About the angels of God. That means. I will be like the most high. He wanted to sit on God's throne. It's about a kingdom. In the first heaven. It's about the kingdom. You see. He's called the prince of the power of the air. He's a prince. And those who rule under him are called princes and kings. Remember Daniel chapter 10. You have the kings of Persia, the prince of Persia, the prince or kings of Grecia. All of them under the devil ruling as principalities, as powers, as spiritual wickedness in high places. It's about ruling. It's about a kingdom. It's about a throne. And when he's cast down to the earth... He says, I'm going to establish my kingdom here on the earth and I'm going to rule the earth. Remember, he was ruling the earth as the God of this world, right? He's the God of this world, but his place was in the first heaven. When the God of this world comes down to the world, he's worshipped now literally because he's appearing as a person, as a man. He's worshipped literally by the world and he establishes his kingdom and says, I'm going to rule now. I'm going to take over this kingdom which God promised to give to his son, Jesus Christ. Right? The millennial 
reign of Jesus Christ is all about again the throne and about the kingdom right Jesus Christ is coming back to sit on the throne of David and the throne of David is a literal throne it's not a throne in heaven it's a throne on the earth that's where he's going to sit and rule and the throne of David Jesus said is going to become the throne of his glory so God promised right Psalm 2 God promised to give the kingdom that he promised to Israel to his son Jesus Christ he's going to sit and rule remember what Jesus Christ said to the Apostles he said in the kingdom you're going to sit on 12 thrones and rule the 12 tribes of Israel what did he say to the Christians in 1st Corinthians chapter 6 that we are going to judge angels right they are going to judge the Apostles are going to judge the 12 tribes of Israel so it's a literal kingdom and the devil tries to usurp again this kingdom and uh, he puts up his own throne in Jerusalem and says I'm going to sit as king and God and I am going to rule it's about the kingdom uh, so what does he do he rules the earth through the Antichrist look at Revelation chapter 13 Revelation chapter 13 verses 2 and 7 verse 2 Revelation chapter 13 and verse 2 and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion look at this and the dragon gave him his power and his seed and great authority look at verse 7 and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations so he rules the earth he rules the earth Revelation chapter 13 again look at the number 13 uh, this the first one was verse 2 and then verse 7 this is what the devil does through the Antichrist right when he's cast down to the earth he persecutes Israel he rules the earth and in the course of ruling the earth he persecutes all the saints of God and kills them right uh, we find that from the middle of the tribulation onwards we have the souls of those who are martyred for the name of Jesus Christ under the altar when the sixth, uh, fifth seal is open in Revelation chapter 6 right so this is where the persecution begins the killing of saints the offering of Jews on the altar in the temple of God as sacrifices to the Antichrist all in the middle of the tribulation right when the devil is cast down from the first heaven to the earth he rules the earth through the Antichrist and this is the third fall of Satan now there are two more falls the fourth and the fifth but what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that for the next Bible study because uh, I think we have been taking too much time for each of these Bible studies some of them are like one and a half hours two hours I think uh, that's not a very good thing to do because uh, it would be difficult to concentrate for so long I understand that my idea is generally to finish a subject as much as possible within uh, you know one Bible study so sometimes I go one and a half two hours in order to try and finish that but again I think it's better we try and break up uh, you know these uh, studies into smaller parts so that it would be easier for you to study because I know many of you are seriously studying the scriptures along with us uh, and it's a great blessing to me to read your emails right when you write and um, it's a great blessing to know that you're seriously studying the Bible along with us that our Bible studies are being a help to you and I praise God for that so the Lord willing we will meet again in the next Bible study and try and finish the fourth and the fifth falls of Satan so far we have seen three falls of Satan the first one is from the third heaven to the second heaven the second one is from the second heaven to the first heaven and the third one is from the first heaven to the earth 
and that is yet future in the very near future in the tribulation that's how god uh, causes the devil to lose his authority in the various places uh, that he rules right and we're going to see in the next bible study he's going to rule uh, uh, for three and a half years but again he's going to lose his authority on the earth as well all right thank you very much for joining us and the lord bless you